can I get a little background on who you are? You know, I don't want to do the whole, how'd you get in the hobby? What's your talk? But like, give me your resume. Mm -hmm. I know you write for magazines. I mean, don't hold back. Who, who are you to the, to the average person that has no clue who you are? Um, go. I started with the organized hobby in about 2004. I'm a lifelong fish keeper, uh, just as you know as basic as it can get growing up and then when i started my family i started keeping aquariums again in earnest and got really interested in genetics and heritability of color traits of apple snails then got interested in dwarf shrimp um, they were only first introduced into the united states in the early 2000s so i was pretty early on with that kind of stuff mm -hmm. and then really just embraced the tiny fish um, i was super active in my local fish clubs attending lots of regional events and being a a wickedly terrible nerd in the hospitality suites where I made a lot of really great connections that allowed me to start importing. So I went from just being an average hobbyist to being active on the board of my local fish club to being an international lecturer within a few years. And it's really just been my, my passion to sort of like be a nerd and answer the questions I have about fish keeping and try as many new things as possible and try and make it as available and understandable to like all the other nerds out there like me. Okay. You know? I, got, I just, I, I just have to interject for a couple of seconds. One, you in your mind are a nerd. I know you, you are the furthest thing from a nerd. Um, <laughs> you nerdy. have a nerd mentality and you like nerdy things and you are incredibly intelligent. Does anybody know that? Like, what did you do before YouTube, before the hobby? I think like you have some formal training in something. You went to college for something, right? Yeah, I was an art therapist as well as I have a sculpture degree. So I was a mold maker, plasterer and professional sculptor. And I was also a veterinary technician. So I've had a few different manifestations of careers. Right. I don't she want to get has, into my education and my background. She has done it all. Mm -hmm. oh, That's I've done pretty some cool. Things. Yeah, That's she's really incredibly cool. interesting. I can't yeah. wait for this podcast because I, I have some really fun things I want to talk mm -hmm. about. Not even fun, just just things that I think everybody else needs to hear because I'm spoiled. I get to I get as much Rachel as I want. And unfortunately, <laughs> Rachel gets plenty of me, which isn't easy <laughs> to deal with. Uh, so, I don't even think that being a nerd is a bad thing. I heard a quote one time and it said that being nerdy is just another way to say that you're so passionate about something that it becomes embarrassing but what, like i that's don't cool. think it's embarrassing cool. well, i nerd. think it's consuming yeah, i am a nerd i am a nerd. <laughs> it is yeah. consuming yeah for me it's it's just consuming i get these questions and these ideas and these interests and whether it's my plants my carnivorous plants my fish you mm -hmm. know right now it's it's kayaking canoeing camping backpacking mm. like mm -hmm. I just uh, am an all or nothing kind of person. Yeah. And yeah. We're going to get to that about, about recent life changes, but I kind of still want to circle back to, um, <clears throat> we had very similar beginnings, uh, Rachel and I. Uh, obviously, she, she got her start in the local aquarium club scene, became part of the speaker's uh, circuit, I believe they call it. But mm -hmm. the first time I heard that, I was like, oh, that that's a thing. I was like, I want to be a part of the speaker circuit. But then as soon as I started getting invites to, to talk, I'm like, I have nothing to talk about. I'll just make a video. But she's the reason I knew her is because she was uh, legendary on a forum. Right. Oh, yes. I did. I glossed over my forum and writing days. Yeah. Yeah. She's I written for, for magazines, the... but Monster Fish Keepers is and Aquarius where... Central. Yeah. Oh, those were the two largest, if not, I, they might, well, I think like maybe Reef something or other might be the biggest uh, forum, but for activity, it's definitely Aquarius Central. It's definitely Monster Fish Keepers, all within the same network of uh, Lee, right? Yes. And Lee's a pretty cool guy. He's I've hung out with cool him a little while. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. So that's where you got your start. You're making posts and, you know, building your credibility. And that's why so many and that's like the identical background story of mine is like the club scene then i got onto forums etc even monster fish keepers i never got as involved in uh like the foreign uh forums uh, so much as she did but monster fish keepers wasn't foreign for her as american are these things still existing like is this yes. something that people they do actively? but okay and cool. they do but unfortunately things like facebook took over, took over yeah and the problem with like facebook groups and i have nothing against them I got one of my own. I think right. it's got like over a hundred thousand members. The problem is, is there's no, there's no like real search function. 
There is to an extent. There's no accountability. You there's don't no, know where these people got their knowledge. There's no categories. From. There's nothing. It's it's fly by day. Mm-hmm. I googled this right quick. Mm-hmm. The forums are. That's where I learned. Yeah. That's where. I mean, if you go on, I don't know if you want anybody looking up your old posts, Rachel, from 10, I have 15 nothing years to be ago. Ashamed of there. Neither I mean, am I. It but goes I mean, back into the early 2000s. I was a global moderator on, on yeah, those sites. There's, like, a, there, there's a learning curve, though, mm-hmm, and you're asking yeah. some real, you know, yeah. I asked some really weird questions. Or, I asked some dumb ones back in yeah. the beginning. Yeah, I mean, yeah, everybody no went through it. And that's the question. only thing that uh, the hobby's missing right now is like the forums were over t- overtaken by social media. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. I think a lot of that is because as social media evolved and the immediacy of information evolved mm. and YouTube evolved, yeah. people didn't want to post and wait. They wanted yeah. the Immediate. possibility of someone a- answering right away. And one of the cool mm-hmm. things back in the day about Aquarium Central or Aquaria Central rather was that they had a chat room. So like a lot of the moderators would hang out in the chat room so new people could come in and if they had questions and couldn't wait or didn't want to wait within the forums, they would get answers right away, but it just yeah. couldn't keep up with sort of the reach and scope of Facebook. And yeah. how fast things were growing and, yeah. and right. social media and social stuff. Social media is so capturing. And well, that's great. what I want. I want to get Flashing. into um, the future of the hobby here shortly with like the impact social media is having. Mm-hmm. And in my opinion, the negativity that's going to eventually become. Absolutely. Um, 